Hello, I'm Justine Willis-Toms. Today I'm hosting Kim Schneiderman. She's the author of Step Out of Your Story, Writing Exercises to Reframe and Transform Your Life. Kim, welcome to the New Dimensions Cafe. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, I want to know, why is it important to look at the choices of how we tell our story? Your book suggests that there are certain storytelling techniques that will help us reframe our personal challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, there are infinite ways to tell the same story. In fact, you may notice that when something happens to you, you may the way that you tell it to your spouse or your best friend might be a different way that you tell it to your boss or a stranger on the street. So there are many, many ways to tell the same story. In fact, we're constantly sort of sifting through competing narratives um, to help explain why things happen the way that they do. We're, we're constantly using that power of interpretation. Um, and while there's no one correct way, there are more constructive ways to tell your story than others. Um, Sometimes people can tell a victim story, and those kinds of victim stories uh, where something happens and they were powerless over the situation and um, can become sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whereas what I hope to do is to help people see that regardless of what happens to them, that they can use their power of interpretation to spin their story um, in a much more positive direction by seeing their, their, the story of their life as a personal growth adventure, which doesn't necessarily whitewash over the hard things that happen to us, but weaves it into a meaningful narrative about how the things that happen to us can potentially transform our character. You mentioned we tell a story to our boss or to our mother or mm-hmm. to our children. And we frame them mm-hmm. all in different ways. But this is more of a story that we're going to tell ourselves. We're going to write our own story. Right. And and you actually encourage us to write it in the third person. Yes. As if it is uh, like we're writing the novel of our life or the screenplay of our life. Right. Absolutely. Well, the premise of my book is that every life is an unfolding story, a unique, dynamic, unpredictable story that's open to interpretation, especially your own. And when I, when I say that to people in my writing workshops, everyone nods their head. But the truth is that like, until something happens to us, oftentimes we don't take the time to really step out of our story and look at who are we, who is this character that we're playing, what's our story about, who's writing our script, or how can the challenges that are, we that show up in our plot line help us develop the tools or insights or um, character virtues that we need to move to the next chapter. And the reason that could be good is because oftentimes when we're in the middle of something that's challenging us, we can become emotionally very involved and it can be hard to get psychological distance. So what my book aims to do is to provide a technique by writing in the third person that helps uh, people get emotional distance from their problem. In fact, it's uh, it's aligned with uh, narrative therapy techniques um, something called externalization that help people get some distance from their problems. And the idea is that you're sort of fooling the censoring ego into thinking that you're writing about somebody else, but you're actually writing about yourself. So you're writing about yourself as a he or a she. And there's actually been a number of of studies um, that have been reported in a bunch of psychological journals that when you look at your life in the third person, that you tend to view yourself through much kinder, gentler eyes, um, that we tend to look at ourselves as having overcome obstacles instead of being sort of a victim. Um, or, or our life is more more malleable. I mean, that in, in when you write in the third person, you're not so stuck in a particular trajectory. You, right. you, you can, right. you can when you, as if we're writing about some sort of great hero, right. Uh, right. we can say, oh, well, we can move that person over here. And, right. and we, we, there's more freedom. Absolutely. There's a lot more freedom to it. In fact, that's what I the feedback I've gotten from a lot of my writing students is that, wow, it's just this really subtle shift. But I felt like I tapped into this elevated perspective that gave me, that literally liberated me to see the larger narrative of my life. And that's kind of the point is that it allows you sort of to tap into the 
omniscient narrator, the you know what, what some people might call the observing ego or this higher self um, that has a little bit of uh, distance from the things that are happening in your life so that you can look at it through a wide angle lens. And I'm wondering when you said who is writing our script, this is like kind of key because are we the victim of other people and we're reacting to them constantly and therefore they're writing our script? Or are we kind of taking hold of our own script and moving it forward in some way? Yes, actually, that's the point of the book. Oftentimes, we have these scripts that we learn from childhood that make meaning of our lives. You know, when things happen, it means this. Maybe it means that life is tough or it means that I'm no good. And sometimes we don't really question those scripts. And so the point of this book is to give people a step-by-step -step guide that helps them reframe their story as a, a personal growth adventure by looking at how the challenges that show up in our plot line can actually be opportunities and stepping stones to help us become a richer, more evolved, well-rounded version of ourselves. In the very beginning of the book, you have us do an exercise that has us write first in the first person and then in the third person, the same event, some mm -hmm. current concern that we might have. And you just say, it's like a, a brief little writing, at least it felt to me like, oh, this is just a brief little writing thing. Okay, I, I have an incident and I just sort of started scribbling it out and, and this happened to me and then he said mm -hmm. this and then mm -hmm. I did this. and. And then you had us rewrite that same situation in the third person. Mm -hmm. She said this and he yeah. said that. And I noticed, number one, I wrote a lot more. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a mm -hmm. bigger piece mm -hmm. of writing than the first one was right. just sort of reporting everything. Right, right. And the second one then got not only into what he said and what my response was, but I intuitively went into what I was feeling and yeah. what I said and why I said it and how it affected me and uh -huh. how scary it was and how uh -huh. to even start to face this situation. I did not uh -huh. want to make that phone call. And I wrote then about the preview uh -huh. of, of making the phone call and getting yeah. myself psyched yeah. up to yeah. even make the phone right. call and, and writing about like, oh, I hope he doesn't answer the phone and I can just leave a message. And, <laughs> and he picks up the right. phone and he answers the phone and now I'm faced with this situation mm -hmm. and I'm, oh man. And it was mm -hmm. wonderful to write it. I could, just could write so much more mm -hmm. because I was writing and she did this and he said that and she was feeling this mm. it was just it was a gorgeous opening and just hooked me Kim mm -hmm. just hooked me mm -hmm. into the rest of the book that's great yeah I'm so, so happy to hear that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you're really talking about you give us lots of cues and lots of sentences you get us to write our character mm -hmm. sketch and go mm -hmm. into our vulnerabilities and mm -hmm. all of that so uh, why character sketch what's important about that well sure so at the beginning of many novels uh, many authors will create a character sketch to get a sense of how that character would evolve over the course of uh, the plot line of the story they're about to write. And so if we imagine that our life is a story, we can apply some of these literary devices to our own lives to get a sense of where we're heading. Because if, like, so the character set, you know, kind of gives a polygraphic picture of who is the protagonist of your story, what does he or she want, what's getting in the way, and what's at stake. And when you know who the protagonist is and what motivates them and what they care about, then you can get a sense of the direction that they're heading in and ask yourself, if the protagonist were to continue doing things the way they're doing, are they going to end up where they want to be? Maybe, but maybe not. And so I want to get a sense of who is this character that we're talking about in our story. And that's like the first step before we actually look at a situation that the character is dealing with and how it may be challenging him or her to grow in a particular way. So in, in, when we say protagonist, I, I, I always interpret that through the, the hero because I think of novels and I think of yeah. movies and the, sure. the hero of the story. And so we do become the hero of our story. But life 
comes at us, mm -hmm. and we can't control that outer. Right. We can't control no. the circumstances very right. often. Right. They, they're coming at us uh, in a surprising way. So what do we have control over? What is it that we can do? You know, we can't always um, control how our story unfolds, but we can use our power of interpretation, the way that we make meaning of our story, to mine um, the opportunities that are presented by these challenges to, um, to transform uh, who we are. So um, we might be faced, uh, as I explained in the preface of my book, with a situation like um, a terminally ill parent. And we, this is something that obviously we have no control over, but we can choose to decide how we want to respond to that. Is this an invitation to heal our relationship with this ill parent or to, um, to just maximize you know, love or to develop more compassion or to find our own inner strength? And in that way, we're always sort of empowered to be able to grow from any situation that's challenging us. Um, and also in that particular situation, right. we're asked to face our own mortality as Absolutely. we watch someone and yeah. we're here with someone's dying. Absolutely. There's a lot that can come up besides right. healing a relationship, right. po the possibility of healing a relationship. There's also facing what is life, what is, it? I right. mean, sure. what is death, and it all kind of comes right. To, right. to quite a uh, wonderful opportunity to go deeper into mm -hmm. our own story. Absolutely. Kim, I just want to thank you so much mm -hmm. for putting this book together. I want to tell our listeners there are lots of cues that you give us. You give us these exercises, and you have all these questions for us to answer that just really launch us into um, a very exciting way of looking at our lives and and I just found it very very helpful. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad. Yeah. I mean the whole the whole point is to really sort of approach your life story, to explore your character with the same sense of adventure that you would, you know, the Himalayas, you know, can you step out of your story and kind of be like, wow, I wonder I wonder how this how this next chapter will unfold and have like a curiosity about it. And sometimes we need that emotional distance, and that's what the third person does. It allows us to kind of have some emotional distance so that we can look at things and say, okay, this is how it looks like my story is unfolding. I'm not sure I want it to continue to, to look to unfold that way. How can I change it? What can I do? What, would I, what actions would I root for if I were reading this in a novel? Thank you. Yes, that's true. And I just want to remind our listeners that Kim brings out our strengths and our vulnerabilities and all sorts of other resources will show up for us mm -hmm. as we start to go through all these exercises. So, Kim, I want to thank you so much for being a part of the New Dimensions Cafe today. Thank you so much for having me. I've been speaking with Kim Schneiderman. She's the author of Step Out of Your Story, Writing Exercises to Reframe and Transform Your Life. And if you'd like to know more about her work, you can go to her website, stepoutofyourstory.com. Or you can get there through the New Dimensions website, newdimensions.org. I'm Justine Willis-Toms. I want to thank you for joining us on the New Dimensions Cafe and ask you, please do join us again. You've been listening to the New Dimensions Cafe. This series of shorter interviews features many of the remarkable guests also featured on our internationally syndicated one-hour New Dimensions radio series. To access more than a thousand hours of programs, to subscribe to our newsletters, or to become a member, please visit us at newdimensions.org.